Welcome back to a new episode of the 1982 Kawasaki 750 Limited Rebuild. Now over the last few weeks I've been away for a short trip to Normandy so I haven't been able to do a lot of work on this bike. But while I was away I received in my engine oil seal kit from Canada which I ordered through eBay and it's actually a complete oil seal uh, kit uh, with all the seals that you're going to need um, and I'm going to see which ones I need to replace. That, that's an important step I need to take now on this bike um, because a number of these seals are shot. And to be able to get at these seals I'll need to take off the front sprocket and I've already removed the left cover where the clutch is housed. I'll show you that in a moment and uh, we'll now be needing to take off this front sprocket and there's a lock nut and a larger 32 millimeter nut um, that needs to be taken off. Now my friend Ted did give me a few of these, these spanners and I've been trying to work with these spanners but without any luck I just can't get access enough to make the turn necessary to loosen the nut. So we're going to try something else. Let me just quickly show you what I uh, borrowed from my friend Rob and uh, we're going to try uh, and uh, remove the nut with special tools. Let me give you, let me show you. Right, well here you see what I'm going to be using to remove the front sprocket nuts, both of them. There's a lock nut that's 27 mil, and there's a nut behind there that's 32. So that's what I'm going to be using to remove the nut to get access to the seals. Here you see I already took off my left cover behind which the clutch is housed and of course this front sprocket and uh, now we're going to try to take this off. Of course I have to block the rear wheel so I'll be doing that also. So let's start working on this. After I've been able to remove the nuts then I'll let the oil run out of the engine so we can exchange the seals. Off we go. Right, well I don't have a lot of space on this side of the engine to work on so I hope you can see it clearly enough. I have two of these and this one's going to fit better so we're going to try this one on and as you can see the 27 fits perfectly snug. I blocked the rear wheel already so that can't move anywhere so let's put it on. And give it a go. Well, there we have it. And I was actually wrong. I thought there was going to be a lock nut. But as you can see here, it's a two phase nut. That's what it is. It goes from a 27 to a 32. It's only one nut, so there's no lock nut. So that came off without any problem. So now we can drain the oil, oil and take off the sprocket, get behind it, take off the cover behind in which all the oil seals are housed, engine seals, and um, that's it, we're ready to go. Next step. Well I hope you can see it clearly, this is the washer that came off with the teeth inside. That came off quite easily. So now we have the nut and the washer removed. Now it's only a matter of uh, carefully pulling off the front sprocket. And there we go. Front sprocket has been removed as you can see. So now we can get behind the sprocket to this panel. Take that off. Of course we still have to drain the oil from the engine before we do that and then we can exchange, start exchanging the seals. So let me just quickly wipe off my hands 
and I'll get back. Well, like I mentioned before, we need to dra drain the oil from the engine before we can take off the side cover in which the engine seals are housed. And I already loosened up the bolt. So here we go. And let's start draining the oil. I've got a new pan sitting under the engine because this oil hasn't really been running in the engine that much, it's quite new. So I'm going to uh, filter the oil and eventually put it back into the engine. Right, well I was able to take off or loosen all the bolts situated around this panel. There are seven in total and I was able to do that with an impact screwdriver because they were fitted quite tight. The bottom one here uh, is actually parallel to the frame at the bottom side of the frame. So it's very difficult to get the right angle but you can just get at it without damaging the Phillips head of the bolt. So these bolts all need to come out now and if everything goes okay I'll have to keep them in the right order though because the uh, bolts are different so you have to keep them in the right order so you make sure that you put them also back the way they came out. So let me start doing that and get back to you uh, once we are able to take off the panel. Well, before we take it any further, I'm going to uh, remove the push rod. Here we are. Take it all out. There we are. Carefully put it away. So as far as I can see now, Everything is loose, so we should be able to pry it open now. So I'm going to carefully try that now, without damaging anything. I can feel it's coming loose already. I'm still trying to be careful that I'm not damaging anything. I have a cloth underneath because there is some residue oil that's going to be coming out. I think we're starting to come loose now. It's a little bit to get difficult to get at because you want to take it off straight. There we go. Now it pops completely loose. There we are. We're completely free. Right, let me get the camera off the uh, tripod to get you a better look because I think it's a little bit too dark also for you to see what we just opened up. So let's have a closer look. Just a minute. Right, this is behind the cover. I hope you get a better idea of what it looks like. 
Here is the inside of the cover we just took off in which you can see th three seals uh, that need to be exchanged. And I did put all my bolts in order from the bottom left counterclockwise going up. And here you see also the uh, clutch push rod. So I'll have a good look at this now. Clean it all out and start replacing the seals. Right, well I thought I might as well bring this cover out into the sunlight so you have a better view. Here you see the inside of the cover with one, two, three seals. And it's quite dirty. And the outside of the cover. Extremely dirty seal. This one over here and this one here. So we're going to uh, clean the whole cover and uh, match up three seals to replace these and actually uh, go ahead and punch them out. Now there's something that's also visible for you when you look at this cover at the moment. Uh, three bolts that hold on this protective uh, plate here for the chain, they all broke off. All three just broke off when I took it off the cover. So before I put this cover back on, I'll take it over to my friend Ted and see if he can drill out these bolts nicely for me so I can use new bolts to fit on this chain guard, as I would call it. It's only a metal strip to connect that again to this cover and then put it back on the bike. So let me start cleaning it out and uh, matching up the seals and take it from there. Well, I guess this episode will need to be continued because after cleaning this cover, I'm discovering some cracks in the cover. So I think it has seen a lot of stress and you probably can't see it very clearly, but here, for example, on the top here, you can see it, there's quite a crack here. It's not going all the way through, but, and around, when you look around it, you see a few more minor cracks in this cover. So what I'll do is take it over to Ted tomorrow, have him have a good look at it, and I think he's going to advise me to find a new second-hand panel to put back in. But I'll be needing the oil seals anyway, so that's not going to be an issue. But um, this is going to be it for now. It's going to be continued, so I look forward to uh, finishing this job, possibly with a new panel. Thanks for watching.